The Caribbean Council for the Blind presents the following profile on employment experiences of blind and visually impaired peoples of the Caribbean. The world of work determines an individual's ability to provide for himself and family the basic needs of living. A person's job also provides a sense of belonging to a community, contributing to that community. Working gives us our self-respect and the respect of our family and friends. Throughout the Caribbean, blind and visually impaired persons are successfully working in a wide variety of jobs. As they will show you, it usually takes only a small amount of assistance and faith from the community for one to maintain or regain his role as a worker after experiencing loss of vision. For decades, the blind and visually impaired peoples around the world have been cast in the role of the basket maker, the arts and craftsmen and women. This traditional role has been much the same in the Caribbean. Work in the crafts today remains an important employment resource for the visually impaired, but this also is evolving into more sophisticated enterprises. These workers had joined their individual time and resources into the formation of a crafts co-op, which has expanded both their production and marketing capabilities. This type of innovation has removed them from the traditional sheltered workshop environment and given them administration and management control over their labors. The movement out of the sheltered employment situation remains a slow but necessary progression and is dependent upon the willingness of the visually impaired individual to take risks and his family, friends and community to support those risks. success in my in the Richard Richard Stockton talent contest back in 1979 I have decided when I met um, David that we do we form our little group and also it brings some kind of income for me so it's my talent I use as well as some kind of income I have lots of advice um, never never take themselves as I am visually impaired. Just take, take themselves as I am a person and I have my ambitions, I have my goals. And anyone who has a vision will make it. It doesn't matter what might be wrong or right with them. Mr. Brown began a new career later in life after experiencing his loss of vision. With the support of Barclays Bank and his local Society for the Blind, Mr. Brown has established a fully independent and successful poultry farming operation. As the head of a large family, Mr. Brown was determined not to give up his role as the provider for his family. He's made the successful switch from small-scale farming to poultry farming with the support and assistance of his family. He received a brief technical training from the poultry suppliers and with the diligent support of a volunteer from the Society for the Blind, has mastered his work and repaid most of the start-up loan to Barclays. Mr. Brown sums up his success saying, the most important support a man can get is from his family 
If he has that, they should all be able to make it together. Mr. Wilson, his support volunteer from the Society for the Blind, has been with Mr. Brown every step of the way in establishing the project. He explained the first things to look for in supporting a visually impaired worker is honest, good work attitudes and a good work history. First thing was honesty. I, I often told the people that uh, they had to be honest in, in their undertakings because the, they had to depend on general public for the support and they had to be honest to, with general public. They had, you had to look to f at the attitude, their work attitude. If the person had good work attitudes, well, uh, we also looked at the, 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 the past of the person, how they have a talk with them and try to find out from their talk what were their were attitudes and things like this. But my um, advice is, and you know, what we did look for too, was uh, a good family relationship. Because we realized that if there was no good family relationship, there was almost a disaster from the beginning. Because it was certain that the project would not be, um, be a profitable one. For many sighted people, the thought of the blind and visually impaired working in a factory setting connotates danger and injury. There are risks in the factory workplace for any employee working with or around machinery and transporting of heavy materials. These occupational hazards can be minimized for the visually impaired in most situations as they have been for the sighted. Mr. Jordan has worked at this aluminum furniture factory for over nine years. His production rates equal those of his co-workers and he is able to independently support himself, his wife and children through his work efforts. Bernard became visually impaired over eight years ago. After several years in a sheltered workshop environment, he made the transition to open employment with the assistance of his local Society for the Blind. His job includes taking cartons of butter off the assembly line, sealing, stamping, and packing them onto pallets. He says the support from his family, friends, and the Society, which helped him to return to the world of work, has given him back his dignity and the ability to support his wife and two children. Victor has worked at this phone assembly plant for over seven years. After becoming visually impaired, Victor spent several years in a sheltered workshop making baskets before entering the open employment market. His job entails cleaning and polishing refurbished phones, skills he learned on the job with the support of his supervisor and co-workers. Peter lost approximately 50% of his sight when he was a phone washer with this company. He has been employed here almost 14 years. After 10 years of polishing phones, he successfully completed a course in electronics and was promoted to the position of telephone repairman. I think one of the things I would like to say is that I would like the people not to feel for blind people or partially blind people, but accept them as a member of society and treat them that way. Warren Johnson started out at this woodwork manufacturing shop on a trial basis with a very skeptical supervisor and director. He's responsible for the fine sanding of wooden toys and other small intricate pieces whose beauty is a result of painstaking detailed handwork. The quality of Warren's work immediately impressed his boss who took him on full time and raised the levels of responsibility. He now lives a totally independent life supporting himself and enjoying his role as a worker. Many professional occupations demand an advanced education for entry into their workforce. The visually impaired of the Caribbean are taking advantage of the open door policy of both overseas educational institutions as well as the West Indies University systems in getting the necessary degrees to pursue the professional careers of their choice.
Well, my name is Naima Lati. I am a physiotherapist. In fact, I'm the senior physiotherapist at this hospital, which is the Bustamante Hospital for Children. Um, I was born blind or partially blind. Really. I see very little, just enough to differentiate um, sort of large objects. I cannot read. I went to the School of Physiotherapy in England, which is um, which trains um, visually impaired persons. And I did my three-year training. I received my um, Charter Society of Physiotherapy um, diploma. It's a very, very satisfying job. There's no question of the fact that you are blind being having anything to do with your work. The work is to be done, and the work is done. And you see the benefits um, from the fact that your patients improve, patients get better, and parents are satisfied, doctors are satisfied. And you know, life is good. I enjoy my work very much, and quite happy in it. Small business enterprises out of the home, in little shops and on the street sales remain an attractive and successful means for many visually impaired people to supplement their family income and provide support for themselves. The men and women seen here selling vegetables, dry goods, soap powder and cold drinks have all managed to establish themselves as workers and providers with small amounts of startup assistance from community groups or their families. The skills involved in these jobs are easily mastered by the visually impaired as seen here, if their motivation to work is there and a supportive community environment. Well, work means survival. In this time, if you don't work, you don't get anything, so it means survival. I love to work. I get a pay or a salary when I finish work, so I like to work. I enjoy working. Many of the local societies of and for the blind throughout the Caribbean support small business endeavors like these. What is needed is a broader base of lending resources in the public and private sector to help these businesses expand and get new ones going. Starting out small to prove their capabilities, these individuals have all expanded their operations to a level of total self-sufficiency. Some of the most satisfying work found by the visually impaired in the Caribbean is in the office setting. Office jobs have traditionally attracted workers with their clean, safe environments, the learning of new skills and possibility of advancement and the pleasure of teamwork with co-workers. My duties mainly entail um, typing of business letters and a few reports and one or two memoranda. My first impression when I got here was that everybody here was so much like a family and I always thought that I would like to, my first job I'd like to be in, um, I would like to be in that sort of setting. They also responded very, um, I would say they were skeptical about me or anything, they didn't treat me in any way um, different, they were always ready to help but not, not in the way that you would think that they would want to help a blind person, it was just like helping another person, you know. I'm the director of secretarial services here. First of all, Alinda has a lovely personality. She is very positive and she is determined to succeed. So that helps Alinda through any situation. She, got, she was not afraid to try any of the typewriters because we have about three different typewriters that we tried her on here. She got and she handled them very well. We found her typing was very good. She was um, she was very accurate in her typing. Mrs. Romaki and Watson have been employed in this government ministry for the past two to four years. Mrs. Watson had to leave her teaching position after becoming visually impaired 
and sought out training in a field she felt capable of working in. Mrs. Romaki has been here for four years. She went blind when 15 years old and was forced out of school. In 1978, with the assistance of the Society for the Handicapped, she received training for her present position. My name is Yutimos Wong. I'm Chief of Support Service for the Ministry of Social Security. But when it comes down to work, Ms. Watson and Ms. Remicki, as I said, operate as normal telephone operators. And in fact, a stranger would not easily know that any of these two persons is handicapped. I'm Sydney Fernando. I'm a partner of Touche Ross Torben and Company, a firm of chartered accountants in Kingston, Jamaica. Gloria came to us about six or seven years ago. I, for instance, get her to do all my private letters. I just dictate it over a weekend and within a half a day I get all my memos and letters back. And she does this for about four or five of us partners. When I first came here, I got I got a lot of help from my co-workers because you um, there are standard ways of doing a meme of doing a letter, but coming into work in a firm as big as this, there are other things you have to do that you didn't learn at school, that they didn't learn in the training center. So I got a lot of help from my supervisor and from my other co-workers. My name is Joy Ramsey. I'm employed as a um, typing supervisor. I've known Gloria since 1979 when she started working here as an audio typist. I found her to be a very excellent worker, very interested in what she's doing, always trying to excel. And she's also very independent. She tells you how she does all her housework for herself. She has a daughter who she, whom she takes care of almost all by herself. She's really interesting. Executive Director, Mrs. Cynthia Simon, and the staff of the Caribbean Council for the Blind express their appreciation to the visually impaired persons and their employers for letting us into their working lives to make this documentary.